and welcome to episode 63 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in North West London. You can find me on Instagram at hippy underscore Nikki. I'm Nikki Hippy on Ravelry and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab on Ravelry you will find our group right there. There will be a chatter thread about this episode so if there's anything in particular you want to have a chat about that is the place to do it. As always, there will be quick links to everything I mention just down below, as well as a link to my blog where juicier show notes are available. As always, I would like to say a massive thank you to any new viewers. Thank you for giving the podcast a shot. I know there are plenty out there, so I really appreciate you giving it a chance. And to my returning viewers, you know I love you. Thank you so much once again for coming back. Today's tea is in my lovely Cursed Child mug, um, the eighth story, 19 years later, and it is Bird and Blend Butter Brew. Mm. I'm actually really proud of myself because there are a lot of bees there and we all know um, how I get with tongue twisters, but Butter Brew is um, inspired by Harry Potter's Butter Beer, which is why I popped it in my Harry Potter mug and it is absolutely delicious. Um, it is a black tea. I've got it, I'm not, I was about to tilt the mug then to show you, which would have been fairly disastrous. Um, I put a tiny bit of oat milk in it. I prefer the texture of oat milk as well as the flavor and it's delicious, but I have had it black and it is also lovely like that. It really varies depending on my mood, whether or not I put milk in it or not, um, but it's absolutely lovely. I recommend it. I buy it as a loose leaf um, sachet, I guess is how you would uh, describe this. And it is Indian Assam black tea, Sri Lankan black tea with calendula petals and natural flavoring, which is where the kind of caramelly uh, butter beerness of it comes from. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorites from Bird and Blend. I will definitely be buying this over and over again when it runs out, so I would recommend it. Before we dive into Whipped Up, I recently noticed when I was uploading the last episode that we are not far off of 5,000 subscribers. I think we need about 80, 85 um, subscribers and we'll be at a nice round 5,000. When I started this podcast, I didn't think I'd get five regular viewers um, because I'm aware that there are so many podcasts out there. As I say at the beginning of every episode, there are so many podcasts out there, so I massively appreciate you giving this one a chance. I'm not the most prolific um, when it comes to finishing things. I don't knit that many garments, although I'm working on it. Um, you know, and, and for me, this podcast has been absolutely such a boon in my life because without this podcast, would I ever have learned to knit socks, for example? Would I ever have pushed myself out of my comfort zone in that way, as I'm now trying to do with garments? Would I have met some of the incredible friends that I now have? No. So that in itself is amazing. And the fact that nearly 5,000 people have subscribed is, it just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Um, and I would like to show my appreciation. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I will do a little giveaway. I will have a route around and see what I can find, make up a little prize, and we will have a 5,000 subscriber giveaway. It will probably be something along the lines of, um, it will be a random number generator. I always feel like that's the fairest thing to do and I really don't like having to choose because then I feel bad and it, it's a real struggle. Uh, but it will probably be a question thread along the lines of something about ask me a non-nitty question or something like that. So get your thinking caps on if you do have any non-nitty questions for me and um, the closer we get, I will start thinking about opening that thread and yeah, I will pull a prize from that, just as a thank you really. But that's quite enough blather, I think, for one introductionary section. Let's move on to Whipped Up. Now, it has been all change in my life at the moment. I um, have kind of changed jobs. Um, I'm still working for my charity, but I am now taking on a lot more responsibility. So I guess I've been promoted. <laughs> um, so it's been a bit crazy. I'm also working in different locations because of it. So I'm working from home a lot. I'm doing a lot of travel to Kent and back in the week. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of 
a bit in flux. So I've only been doing this for about a week and I am just settling in and I'm trying to get my runs in because that second half marathon is fast approaching. So life, yet again, life um, is, is doing its usual thing that it does to me. So you will not be surprised by the content that I have for you this week, I hope. Now there are no foes. There are no foes this week, but I do have a hoe and it is a hoe that makes me very happy. You could say, it's a ho, ho, ho. I can literally hear the tumbleweeds. That was really bad. I don't know why I'm not somebody's dad because that that is up there with some of my best dad jokes. So um, yeah, maybe I should look into that. This is the vanilla sock that I had, I believe, cast on last episode. I hadn't done much on it, really. It is Candy Cane by West Yorkshire Spinners. And I'm using Cayenne Pepper as the... Um, contrast heel that's not the heel that's the cuff cuff heel and toe um that is one down one to go and this is for my christmas box of socks and this was cuffed down i literally cast it on because just don't have the time really to work on my toe up sock we'll come to that shortly um but yes this is my hoe for this week I feel very virtuous about this. I, as soon as I cast it off, I wove in all the ends and I blocked it the next day and popped it straight on a blocker. And I knew that I had to do that because if I didn't, I would just leave it just sitting around for ages and I didn't want to do that. It's better just to get it done. And I did get it done. The one thing I will say is I love these sock blot blo blotters. I love these sock blotters. Um, blockers which I got from Loop a little while ago. I think most people have them. I like them because they are just really thin and light and the air can get through so they dry really quickly. They're not the prettiest. I've seen some gorgeous um, wooden ones, some really cool ones actually in the Summer of Socks um, chatter thread where I think somebody had um, a wooden pair with like bones instead of a hanger. It was a bone sticking out, which just made me giggle because um, I'm a child. <laughs> But these are very good. The only thing I will say is this one has like a rough edge just here. So when I'm pulling them on, I'm very aware that it's catching on the yarn, which kind of annoys me a little bit, but I don't really know what to do about it. I don't. I thought about getting some sandpaper and just gently sanding it down, but I don't know if that works on metal. So if you have any ideas, let me know. The other option, I guess, would be putting some sellotape around it. Um, so yeah. If you have any thoughts on that, please let me know because I would like to fix that if possible. Because I have a hoe, that does mean that I do have um, a new one on the needles. So I've just done the cuff. That's all I've done so far. I just need to change to the candy cane and get the leg going. Normally I would have done that straight away, but I am working on my advent calendar. Yes, it is only September, but I like to get ahead of these things and I've been working on it all year. So I wanted to wind off three little balls for my advent calendar swap from this candy cane skein before I started the sock, because then I would know it's, it's done. Um, I felt fairly comfortable doing that because there is tons of this stuff, like West Yorkshire Skinners, Skinners? I got too arrogant, didn't I? I got too cocky and thought I could just say it off the cuff. West Yorkshire Spinners, not Skinners, Spinners. Uh, they are very, very generous with their sock skeins. I think you could easily get um, two pairs of socks out of these, even if one was slightly shorter. I do have quite skinny feet. So that might be why I really find the put up is generous. But I knew I'd be able to get three little balls for my advent swap. So I just did that. And now whatever is left will go into my blankets. Now I did mention my toe up sock, which is the other Christmas sock that I'm working on and I'm just gonna pull it out and try not to make a massive mess because I am attached to two balls at the moment. Um, this is West Yorkshire Spinners in their Holly Belly. Holly, oh my goodness. I am, I am just so articulate today. I apologise. Clearly I haven't had enough tea. Holly Berry colourway and also cayenne pepper again. This is my first attempt at toe up socks and I am just, just starting to work on the heel flap in the red. And um, 
I'm actually using a different video um, than the Halo one just because I wanted to do a heel flap and gusset and I don't think that's the one she's showing in her video. I would have to double check that. I was looking on my lunch break so I was limited on time so I was kind of skimming. Um, but this one is a heel flap and gusset um, heel. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. So I'm going to get the heel hopefully finished, heel flap, sorry, finished today. And um, yeah, I don't really understand how it works. I One thing I'm not very good at is being able to read a pattern or read a recipe or anything like that, or any how-tos, and understand how they come together just by reading it. It's one of those things um, that I just have to do. And I have accepted this about myself. Um, so generally I will read through instructions and if it doesn't make sense I will just trust that it will make sense as I'm doing it. So this is very counterintuitive to me because usually you do the heel flap and then the heel turn and then the gusset. So it makes sense to me to do a gusset and then the heel turn and then the heel flap. So perhaps this is completely wrong in which case learning experience and if it isn't I will understand it and it will click as I'm doing it. So I am I'm trusting in the process at the moment. But that trust does not extend to snipping my yarn. That is why it's still attached to both um, colours at the moment. As you can see, this is the Hollyberry skein and this is how much I've used of it already. So you can see why I feel pretty good about winding 30 grams off without worrying about losing any. So I was, as soon as I'm able to snip this off of here, I will be winding some off of this. And yeah, I'm very happy to have lots of Christmassy colorways in my advent calendar this year. Speaking of advent calendar, uh, which I was, despite the fact that it's September, you know, we are knitters. We do tend to get ahead of ourselves when it comes to Christmas making. So I hope you will not hold this against me. I um, realized the other day that I still had my advent calendar magic ball on the go. Um, the idea was that I would knit them all into my cosy memories blanket and then the leftovers I turned into a magic ball to go into my cosy stripes blanket. That ball is not finished. Um, I got really busy, it got very cumbersome and then it got hot. So now that it's cooled down a little bit, I have reached for my Cozy Stripes blanket, which is just here. I will pop this back when I'm done. I just wanted to show you. Um, as always, I won't do the full wingspan of it because it is massive. So I will just show you half these. I've put about three rows on this um, over the past week, which is quite significant, really. Um, speaking of autumn, which we kind of were, <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's, the weather has been kind of weird, so it was absolutely baking, as you may have noticed in my last episode, I, I may have mentioned that it was slightly warm, um, but then I feel like the moment it turned the 1st of September, the weather turned like we'd snapped a switch. Has anyone seen Thumbelina? It's not Disney, I don't know who did it, but it was Thumbelina, um, and there's this, swallow in it who's her friend and I think his name is Jacques because he's French obviously and um, there's this scene in it that I always remember where I think it's summer and then all of a sudden the sky goes a bit grey and all the leaves just drop and he goes oh autumn and that's what I feel like happened on the 1st of September it was absolutely blazing hot and then autumn um so yeah that's why so I'm just not with it this week guys but that is why I reached for one of my blankets and I haven't done any work on my cozy stripes um cozy memories blanket which is the knitted squares but um I definitely have been thinking about it a lot and wanting to reach for it and I think that the the change in the weather that kind of slight nip in the air the fact that I have had a pumpkin spice latte um when I was catching the train to Kent, I did get one in Starbucks. I have had a bonfire hot chocolate from Costa on my local high road. So all of those things just mean I want to reach for blankets. So expect more blanket in future episodes. And now the fun bit is getting it back into the basket without knocking the plant over. Now the other thing that I've been working on, I am going to show you, um, even though it's technically not knitting or crochet, 
and I'm only going to give you the very slightest little sneak peek just in case the people involved are watching. But the reason I'm showing it is because the advent swap that I do is absolutely lovely and I recommend anyone to do it. I think that yarn advent calendars are absolutely beautiful and if I had the funds I would buy one. Unfortunately I don't. Um, I've mentioned before I am saving up, I'm hoping to get a mortgage in the next few months. Um, life being what it is again. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying not to spend too much money, which is why I love doing my yarn swap with friends. This year there is going to be four of us, which means um, creating eight little um, mini advents for each person. I will then receive eight from each person and I will have a full advent calendar. Now what I have tried to do this year is make it part of my process that when I finish something, I wind off um three two or three balls um the great thing about having three people is it means i only kind of have to have eight <laughs> different colors or enough um so i wind off the little balls put them away label them up put them away and um they're ready to go so it wasn't like a massive stress however it took me a little while to get some digital scales i bought some they didn't work properly i sent them back and then it was one of those things i had to go and get new ones so i picked up some new recently and i just sat for a couple of evenings and weighed them out wound them up labeled them and it's a lot more time consuming than you think so that's why a chunk of sock hasn't been done that's why a bigger chunk of the blanket has not been done it's also why my jumper didn't get cast on because Wednesday and Thursday evening, they were both gonna be jump cast on days. Didn't happen because I was winding minis. I keep them in this tin. Um, my boss last year went to France and brought back these lovely madeleines and then I kept the tin. And I'll just give you a little sneaky peeky. There we go. So yeah, I find if you're gonna do it, um, it is quite time consuming to wind them all. So, yeah, if you can make it part of your process, just do one while you're blocking whatever you're working on, just wind off some yarn and put it away and then it's kind of done. So yeah, I just keep them in here. It makes me very happy to see them. It makes me very happy to see all of these pretties. Um, just warms my heart and makes me feel a little bit of a festive spirit, a little bit. Now, we will very soon be coming to Summer of Socks prizes, but before we do, Summer of Socks was very inspiring and I do have a little bit of sash enhancement to share with you first. I have queued a lot of patterns thanks to the Summer of Socks Cal. I have queued patterns, I have um, favourited yarns, and it has been absolutely joyous for that reason. One thing though was an absolute instant buy. You all know my deep and abiding love for West Yorkshire spinners and I I just love it I, I have said before but I think the colors are beautiful the quality is beautiful you get a lot of yarn for your money which is great for me because I have blankets and advent swaps and you know various other things I can use leftovers in as I said I've also got quite skinny feet so I could technically do myself a couple of um, pairs out of each ball um, but I love their country birds colorways I've done the blue tit um, I have done the mallard and I've got wood pigeon um, and now I have kingfisher now this was inspired by the raveler pernickety stitch um, she mentioned um, I think she posted a picture of her kingfisher socks and I just thought they looked so beautiful I had to buy them she also mentioned doing them with a yellow contrast so I got some yellow because I absolutely love 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 mustard at the moment I think this is called mustard and I think it goes beautifully with the kingfisher and they are going to make some really lovely not Christmas box of socks but they are going to make some really lovely socks so that was my little payday treat and there is one more thing that I have for stash enhancement and it's been a week since this arrived and I'm still kind of overwhelmed by it. Um, this was sent to me by the lovely Senya of knit to code She has a beautiful Instagram and a new podcast, which I will link to just below so you can check out her stuff. And she asked if she could send me a gift. And I said, yes, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. And what came was just... I was so overwhelmed, I absolutely could not believe it, and you will see why when I show you. First of all, it came in this. This is humongous. 
This is such an enormous project bag. You could easily fit two jumper projects in here, but I think this is going to house my blankets. So I really don't have the space in any of my bags anymore to fit blankets in that's really kind of overflowing. And I think this is absolutely perfect. What I like about it is it's quite stiff. So when it opens up, it is like a kind of buckety bag, which is great. I love, it kind of looks like a fish from there. <laughs> looks like a fish um but I love that and it was full of goodies but before I wonder if I can show you the inside because the amazing thing about this bag is that it lights up and I can't show you because it's really bright but on the inside flap here she has installed some teeny tiny little blue and green lights so that it just lights up so I can just flick the little switch and it will light up and I'll be able to see inside absolute genius absolute genius so now i'm going to take you through what was in it so apart from the lights it's also got a couple of pockets which is really handy again i don't think i can show you because i'd have to like turn it inside out but it's got a really nice pocket and a thin pocket next to it which is quite handy for putting like spare dpns or needles in which i really like but let's have a look at the contents because if this didn't overwhelm me the contents really did um First of all, we have some tea, and this is called Tiger's Daydream. Daydream, even. I'm so articulate today. I'm so sorry. Um, this is a flavoured tea. It's black tea with quince, elder, and honey flavourings, enhanced with cornflower and sunflower petals. Sunflowers are my favourite flowers, so this is really working for me. Um, dried black elderberries, pieces of orange, and pineapple. That sounds really yummy. <laughs> Um, I really can't wait to try this. It's a shame you can't sniff through the kind of plastic, but obviously it's plastic to keep the flavours in. Um, next up we have Moose on the Loose, which is just cute. I love that. Um, premium loose leaf black tea with blackcurrant leaf and red clover. Um, one, I don't drink soft drinks, so I would either drink tea water i drink a lot of water um tea water or occasionally coffee now that i've gotten into coffee over the last month I, I will drink the maybe three to five coffees a week um however the only kind of non water drink that i drink is ribena black currant ribena is my one of my favorite drinks and when i'm feeling a bit under the, under the weather i will have a hot ribena i love ribena it's just a throwback to my childhood i love it so having a black tea with black currant in it tea plus ribena can't wait to try this i think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous and now that i have shown you both of these things i can crack into them i don't have to worry about keeping them pretty for the podcast she included a little iron on patch, which will definitely be going on either my backpack or my denim jacket. I haven't decided yet. I think probably my backpack because that's where all my pins are, but this is really cute. I love this. And then there's this little black case. She sent me some stitch markers, so I have put those in here. But to be honest, if I didn't use headphones, if I had earphones or earbuds, AirPods, those ones that just hook in your ears with those really brave people who don't think they're gonna fall out. It would fall out if it was me. I just like, I'd flick my hair, I'd pull my hat off and poof, 100 pounds worth of something on the floor. Anyway, side note, tangent. Um, but yeah, this is really handy for stitch markers. And these are cute little wooden ones that are laser engraved, I guess, um, with mittens. Whoops, look, there's one with a little mitten. And got a little sack there. And there's make one right, make one left, super, super handy. So they now live in there because I am forever losing my um, stitch markers so they can live in there, safe and sound. And then we get to the yarn. Oh, so I love yarn. So first of all, we have this beautiful skein um, from Two Bare Hands, and it's their simple sock, which is an 80-20 merino nylon, and it is called Glacier, and it's hand dyed in Nelson, New Zealand, and it is so beautiful. You know I love my blues, but look. It says sock. I should knit some socks out of it, but it's so pretty. Can I wear that as a hat? Should I wear that near my face, or should I make socks out of it? I kind of feel like this should be 
um, a really pretty pair of socks. If there's like a pattern with maybe like a lace snowflake motif, these can be my Elsa socks. Um, yeah, I think socks. I really love that they've made a label um, out of like a piece of undyed linen. That's really, really lovely. That's really nice. And then they've just kind of sewn the label onto that. I think that's really cool. I like that. Very rustic. And then they've got Novita, which I have heard a lot about. Um, I've never tried it. I think it's a fairly new company. Um, it reminds me of West Yorkshire Spinners. Um, it seems like a similar type of company where it's a really good rustic yarn, really nice and soft, but really um, tough and wearable with a lot of colours. And this is an absolutely gorgeous blue. And I think I would either knit myself... No. I think this is contrast heel, toes and cuffs. I think that's what this is. I think that they kind of work, don't you think? And I do love my contrasts. I do love my contrast heel, toe and cuff. And then we have these mini skeins. Now these were unlabeled, um, so I don't know where they're from, I'm really sorry, but they are so gorgeous. I love this green one. This green one is basically the project bag made yarn, which I think is gorgeous. I absolutely love that. And this one is just, <sighs> this is me if I was a mini skein, because look at that. Oh, that's such a beautiful color. I wonder if I could make a teeny tiny hat out of it or just wear it. Oh, look at that, I just wear it as a headpiece. I work from home now, don't have to worry what I look like. Just wear it as a headpiece. Uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. So obviously these will be making up two beautiful, beautiful squares in my cozy squares blanket and then going into my cozy stripes. Now I'm gonna be honest with you that there was more in there. There was a really big block of delicious chocolate, um, which I ate. I did share it. I did share it with my mum and nan, uh, but I ate most of it. And there were two little boxes of um, kind of aniseedy sweets. So Senya, you have made me very, very happy. You have made me speechless, which any viewer of this podcast will know is difficult to do. And you've made my mum very happy because she really enjoyed the chocolate that I shared with her. And you've made my nan very happy because she now has new favourite sweets. So thank you so much. That was incredibly kind of you. As I've said, I have linked to Senya's podcast just below. So click down there to go and check it out. Knit to code. One last thing for stash enhancement. Um, I have just had some very generous messages recently, which I can only only say thank you for. I'm so grateful. Um, but Lorna from Never At A Loose End asked you to send me a little gift and she sent me this, which is a print. And it says, all wool is yarn, but not all yarn is wool. And this is by her daughter. Um, I believe you pronounce it a leash, um, but she is by a leash on Instagram and I will link to both of them just down below. Um, just trying to get the glare off of that so you can see. That is going to get framed when I move and she did send me a second one um, to give away to a friend and I know exactly the friend who's going to get it and I'm not gonna mention them just in case they watch. But thank you so much, Lorna. These are absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to get this up in my house. But now it is prize time for the Summer of Socks Cow. Um, I sat down this morning and I made up some packages and I pulled winners via random number generator. So as I've said before, I really don't like choosing winners based on content. Like I didn't want to go through and go, which is my favorite, you know, five socks or something um, and pull winners based on that because it just, it's too much pressure on me. I can't do that. So random number generator just feels like the fairest way to do things. Before we dive into actually looking at the prizes and letting you know who's won. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated. Um, it was an absolute joy to step into that thread. I had absolutely no idea how busy June, July and August were gonna be. I did not know uh, half of what had happened in those months was going to happen with a lot of work, upheaval, um, more travel than I was expecting and so on and so forth. So it was absolutely lovely to have that thread to dip into and dip out of and just see you guys chattering away, even without me kind of there um, chatting as much as I'd hoped to. And as I said at uh, earlier in the episode, I have found more yarns, more patterns and it has just been gorgeous. 
And now that I have finally learned how to knit socks, I am sockcessed and I don't want to lose that sock chatter from my daily life. So I have started a new chatter thread called Show Us Your Socks. Now this is nothing to do with a knit along, it is not a prize giving thread at all, but this is where if you wanna get sock in inspiration, dip into there, show off your socks, have a look at other people's socks, show some love. And yes, the Summer of Socks will be back next year. It is gonna be an annual event from now on. But now it's time for prizes. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm gonna show you the prize. I'm gonna let you know who the winner is. If you hear your name or if you see it up on the screen, please drop me a message on Ravelry. I am Nikki Hippie on Ravelry. Uh, you can go into the Tea and Possibilities group and click on me and message me via there. Now, most of these prizes are physical prizes, but there are also some pattern download prizes. So whichever one they are, I need you to contact me, drop me a Ravelry message. I check in on my Ravelry you know, two or three times a week. Uh, so if you don't get an immediate response, I will get back to you. But if you could let me know the information that I require, and I will tell you very shortly what that is, that would be really, really great. So just keep an eye out for your name. First prize is this beautiful project bag. It's made up of all recycled fabrics and it is by Sharon of Sharon's Crafty Creations here on YouTube. Also in here, we have one of the new paint box colorways. It's one of my favorites. I love the bright greens in this. We have a progress keeper from a busy life yarn. I don't know if you can see that. It's a couple of little hearts. And I'm gonna leave these in the packet so that they don't go everywhere. And um, so you probably can't see them, but there are some laser etched stitch markers from Yarn Tattoo. Also included with this prize is a downloadable pattern from Yarnia Designs, which is the Cottage Garden Socks. Now, the winner of this little prize is Auntie Mole. So if that is you, please do send me a Ravelry message and I will arrange for you to get your downloadable pattern and I will pop this into the post for you as soon as I can. This is prize number two. This is the Yarn Tattoo Project Bag. I love the fabric on this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So in here we have the Granddaddy Tree by Busy Life Yarns and the tape measure from Yarn Tattoo as well. This is the tape measure uh, leather bracelet. And there is a downloadable pattern with this as well. It is also from Yarnia Designs and it is a Kern. So this little prize has been won by Cynthia G. Wilson. So Cynthia, if you could drop me a message on Ravelry, I will need your address to post this out to, and then I will arrange for Yarnia Designs to send you the Akern Socks downloadable pattern. Next up is another beautiful recycled fabric bag from Sharon's Crafty Creations. And in here, we have a few things. So we have some really lovely wooden buttons from Yarn Tattoo. We have one of my all time favorite paint box socks um, colorways, which is the rainbow stripes. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And we have one of these wall hangings. This is a laser cut wooden base. It says, I like big balls and I cannot lie. And has been hand crocheted and this was donated by Woolberts. So thank you so much Woolberts. And that will be in your prize package as well as a downloadable pattern from Knit 10 in Stone, which is the stacking wood socks. So this has been won by Ali13. So Ali13, please do drop me a Ravelry message again with your address and then I will arrange to get your downloadable pattern sent over to you and I will post this out as soon as I can. Oh, we're getting there guys, there's only two more prizes to go. Uh, next up is this massive bag by Cat in the Bag Creations. This is a perfect bag for a blanket or a garment or just to keep all of your sock whips in. Um, and in here, also donated by Woolberts, is this beautiful skein from Knit Crate. It is called Citrus Squeeze, and I love it. I love pink and yellow together. I think they're gorgeous. I was very tempted to snaffle this for myself, but I didn't. So that will be in here. And that is also with a Busy Life Yarn Progress Keeper. And this lovely, lovely one is for Pernickety Stitch. So please drop me a message on Ravelry, again with your address. Also with this is a pattern by Vicky Bird Designs. So what I will do is if you could drop me a Ravelry message, I can get this posted out to you as soon as possible and give you the code to use in Vicky Bird's lovely Ravelry store. Last but not least is this beautiful project bag, perfect sock size from Butternut Handmade. And in here we have the final paint box skein. Again, it's one of their new colorways. 
And we have the other donation by Woolberts, which is another little wall hanging. So much yarn, so few hiding spots. <laughs> so that all goes in there. This also comes with downloadable pattern for stacking wood by Knit 10 in Stone. And this has been won by Vicky Bird Designs. So Vicky, drop me a message um, and I will get the pattern over to you and I'll get this posted out as soon as I can. That is all the physical prizes. However, Vicky Bird Designs was very, very um, generous and offered me three patterns um, to gift to people as prizes. So there are two more left. So if the following two people could contact me, I will give you a code so you can choose the Vicky Bird design of your choice. So if you are Ruth82 or Sophie Zuen, which I believe is how you pronounce it, I'm really sorry if I butchered that, but if either of you hear your name, please do drop me a Ravelry message and I will get that over to you as soon as possible. Whew, that I think was the biggest prize giving I have ever done on this podcast. I i um, absolutely overwhelmed by the number of people who donated prizes, who donated patterns, by the number of people who got involved in the cal itself. It was absolutely amazing. It was definitely my most successful cal ever. Thank you, thank you so much to everyone who got involved. You really did brighten up my summer in multitude of ways. I hope you will all get involved next year. And in the meantime, I hope you will join me on my mad quest um, to emulate Amy Florence of Stranded and knit myself a box of Christmas socks and show me your socks in the chatter thread. Oh, that was a very long whipped up. Let's um, have a much shorter knit and natter. <laughs> As I said, it's going to be a much shorter knit and natter uh, this episode because I have trashed my room in the quest to podcast. There is whips on the floor here. There is also a big pile of prizes. Um, I have thrown everything that I didn't want on camera onto my bed, which I'm currently staring at and doesn't look good. Um, I wanna have a good tidy up and be ready for the week ahead. I also want to watch The Favourite. Um, I've just got a very busy day ahead of me currently. But um, I just thought I'd give a quick life update because it's been summer, it's been busy. Um, I recently went to visit my lovely friend Charlotte who has recently had her first baby. You may remember that I knit quite a few things for them um, when she was pregnant. So it was lovely to go and see her. And no, the pineapple hat did not fit but it did fit the Triceratops that I bought her. So we're just gonna leave it as the Triceratops' hat. Um, she looks very happy in it. I'm sure it will make the little one giggle when she gets a little bit older, but she wasn't absolutely a lovely baby. So yeah, she was very sweet. Well done, Charlotte, very well done. Uh, while I was down there for the day, um, I've been saying the ages that I want to get my nose pierced. And as you may have noticed, I have had it done. And the place where I usually get my piercing done is in Portsmouth. Um, I once went and spent a weekend with Charlotte and came back with four new piercings. I got um, two extra holes in each ear. And that was a couple of years ago. And I've been meaning to get my nose pierced for ages. Um, and I could have got it done in London, but I just, I know this piercer and I really like them. And every time I went down to visit her, something would happen and I couldn't get there or I'd get there and they weren't in or they were closed or whatever. And I, we went shopping when I went to see her and I just went, you know what, I'm just gonna pop in and see. And they happened to have buy one, get one half price. So I got my nose and I got my helix done as well. And um, that brings my total piercings up to eight. And I'm looking to get a nice round 10. So I think at the end of the year, I will probably go back and um, I will get one or both of these. So I wanna get my orbital done just here and I wanna get my tragus done on this side. So I will either do that at the end of the year or at some point in the next year. Um, and then it's on to tattoos, three more tattoos. <laughs> oh God. As I said, I am saving currently and piercing is that little bit cheaper than tattoos. Also this summer I went and did indoor skydiving with a friend of mine, my very good friend, who I have literally known 32 years, I've known him all my life, his sister got him an indoor skydiving experience for Christmas and it was running out so he was like, yeah, come along. And we went and had dinner 
and did this very weird thing on Sunday evening over bank holiday weekend. It was very strange. It was literally just this wind tunnel and you kind of, I'm gonna spill this tea, just one second. I'm gonna put that down. Um, but you go to the door and you kind of just fall through the door and this guy tilts you into the wind and you just, it's really weird. It's a really weird thing to do of an evening, um, but it was great fun. I actually really loved it. I would have been quite happy in there for about half an hour, but you only get a minute's flight at a time, which was a shame. But yeah, it was, it was really fun. It was really fun. It was a weird thing, but it was, it was good fun. How many times can I say fun in one sentence? What else have I been up to? I have been going on lots of lovely long walks. Um, so I've walked um, from East London to West London, which was about 13 miles a couple of weeks ago. I've had some really good brunches. We delayed our usual summer get together to September because obviously our friend was having a baby so we wanted um, her to have said baby and to get kind of settled and comfortable into that new new life before we all got together. So we're having that next weekend so hopefully the weather will hold and we can have a lovely barbecue otherwise we'll be sat in <laughs> probably get pizza. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's been a lovely summer. It has, as I have alluded to, been very, very busy. Um, as I said, my trip to Como was very last minute. Um, there was a lot of upheaval at work, which has led to my promotion and the fact that I am now working remotely. So it's been a lot of work, a lot of handover, a lot of getting used to things. My training has massively slid so much. So my next half marathon is on the 13th of October and I haven't had a good long run in about a month. I've done runs here and there, so I haven't just completely stopped. But um, with work and everything, I did feel like I was bordering very much on burnout and I was trying to listen to my body and I was doing a lot of just coming home, having a hot bath, eating and knitting because I felt like that's what I needed. I did at the beginning of the summer do a little bit of, I mean, you could say I was burning the candle at both ends, or you could say that I took the candle and I threw it into the open fire, um, which is probably more accurate. So I have taken the foot off the pedal a little bit and now I'm ready to get back to my training. So that is what I will be doing from tomorrow. So wish me luck that I can get literally up to speed in time for the 13th of October. What am I doing? Absolute madness. So yeah, it was a really busy summer. It's been really, really fun, but I'm really looking forward to some slower days slowing it right down, getting settled into my new role, getting settled back into my gym routine, um, just getting settled really, and eating some vegetables and enjoying the latest Jane Austen adaptation that's on TV, and just taking some time to breathe. And that is what I'm really looking forward to this autumn. So happy autumn, everyone, because it is now officially autumn according to Starbucks and their pumpkin spice latte. Well, that's it for this week. If you did hear your name um, when I was talking prizes, please do drop me a message, um, either so I can get your downloadable pattern sent to you or with your address, so I can get your actual prize sent to you physically. And I hope you have a lovely nitty couple of weeks and I will see you very soon for another cup of tea. Take care, bye.